Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the salt mines, where we delve into the very, very mineral-rich salt mines that exist within the StarCraft community. Because when you're playing a game at hundreds of actions per minute, you're trying to manage economy workers, tech trees, buildings, and micromanage your army at the same time. It turns out you almost always fall short, and when you end up losing, you get a little bit angry. So we've got Sivan in the top right of here, representing Clan Heroes. The Red Zerg player up against Erezors, the blue Protoss player who has a, a moustached Protoss uh, next to the Nexus. I like that. Is that an official portrait or is that like, that must be a custom thing they photoshopped or something. Either way, I love it. We've got a gateway going down. Looks like a pretty solid wall off here for Erezors and is looking to block the hatchery, which Erezors luckily does go into the main to check because that is not planned. Simon is going for, well, it appears to be 13, gas 12, pull! <laughs> and Arizona's like, cancer! How dare you rush me! I mean, this is really easy. You've already got the wall off. You just get a second gateway. Oh, you're meant to build a second pylon. That's the first thing you're supposed to do, is get a second pylon so you can build zealots. Says the unranked player. Oh, so Simon pointing out the other player's playing unranked to avoid getting the uh, anxiety of ladder. And yet, Arizona's, you need to wall off. Why are you typing in chat? Second pylon! Second pylon, second gate, come on! <laughs> Cheesing isn't skill. Oh, it's R-worded. Okay, Simon says, thank you. Erizor says, yeah, you're glad. Thing is, this doesn't even need to be an all-in, but I can't believe Erizor is prioritizing typing over building a second pylon! Terminal cancer for SC2, people like you are. Dude! Second pylon, now! Oh my god, this is the... Funniest thing I've ever seen. Literally, Erezor scouted an early pool and lost the game from scouting it. Like, how often do you lose but just literally from scouting what your opponent's doing? Still not building a pylon. Erezor's here getting a shield battery started the Zealot. I mean, this, this isn't as bad as it could be. Luckily, for some reason, Simmons has been chasing uh, Lings around the edge of the map and he's only here with like four Lings so far. So... The Cybercore actually could survive if only there was a second. Oh my god, Chrono Boosting an Adept into a Supply Block. Still no second pylon on the way. What is Erezor's doing? This is one of the worst things I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. Honestly, scouting this should make you feel good. It's so easy to defend this build. But uh, no, Zealot and a Shield Battery ain't going to cut it, dude. Okay, the pylon starts. That was, I think, about a minute and 20 seconds after scouting the early pool. That may be the longest supply block in a situation where it is the only thing that you need to do in the first piece of your defense. <laughs> now pylons go down at the front. Simmons just like, oh, really? Normally they have more than one zealot by three minutes. Simmon was actually planning to go for the Nidus all-in on one base. This is one of the dirtiest all-ins you can ever do. But Simmon literally didn't even need to get to the dirty part of the build. It was just a standard gas pool link speed flood. This is not hard to stop at all. People like you are literal cancer. What did you do this game? You abused a map where 12 pool is broken on? Wait, what? This is a pretty long rush distance with an easy to wall off ramp. This is, what? You ruined this game with this incompetent behavior? <laughs> oh, what I love about this show is just seeing how many people have so many losses and it's because of someone at the start of a loss streak. Like, you know, Four games before this, Erezor's died to an early pool, has been fuming ever since then. And literally, Simmon didn't even need to work for this victory. Simmon needs to go find the Zerg that 12 pulled Erezor's three or four games ago and buy them a beer, because that's the person who inflicted the trauma that allowed this to happen. <laughs> Just wall properly? <laughs> this is a proper wall, <laughs> noob. Uh, you know you should chrono out a second zealot. Yep, that is correct. Do you know what? You need a second pylon to do that. I love that Simon knows what Erezor's needs to do to defend. Erezor's like, no, you're too low brain. No, no wonder you do this shit. You can't play this game at all. And ah, oh, Simon throws some love hearts out there as uh, the defeat screen comes in. No GG, no voluntarily leaving. Erezor's there. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm hoping didn't keep queuing after this game because I can only imagine there's a treasure trove in those following games. All right, going into the next map, we've got someone from my clan, Permafrost in the bottom left side. And this must actually be a reasonably high level match because I recognize this name up here. Obviously it's Beyond's nickname, but I've played against this player on the North American ladder. This is Micro Jackson. 
So they must be at least Masters 2 to be in the range of players that I could play against on the ladder. Um, but I think they're Terran normally. So if this is their Protosoft race, I did see a Diamond logo on the load screen for Permafrost. Maybe about Diamond play. But either way, Micro Jackson, definitely very high level with their main race. Uh, but this is, of course, a PvZ matchup. Going to be going for the low ground wall. off. looks like a reasonably solid opening. Ooh, that pylon placement though, guys. <laughs> I've been making fun of everyone's walls on this map. So the trick with the pilot on this map is you're meant to wall off with the gateway above this pillar, not down there. Cause now there's no space to fit a building here. So this is going to be a really awkward wall, but Micro Jackson doing a good job of blocking the hatchery, but oh, it's not that good. Cause this is an early pool. Oh, the double drone. The two drones just managed to get a surround on that probe. And oh my God. <laughs> To be fair, the drones did both drill that probe from both sides simultaneously. So I don't think Micro Jackson's talking about permafrost here with the homophobic slur. Is just saying, hey, those drones clearly engaged in some uh, behavior. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> wow, B, how much says permafrost? Whoa! Oh my god, Micro Jackson. I was like, okay, that one I can't make an excuse for. The previous one I could I could make up an excuse for. That one, no. I uh, Wow, just bringing out the racial slurs straight away. N-words, I see. Permafrost is going to go for the offensive hatchery, and Micro Jackson is going to try and wall off behind this. Now, that looks, I think that's a solid wall, but this is going to be really tough. Why aren't there zealots building? Micro Jackson is not building zealots. Is this the same as the last game? It seems as though you are upset, says Permafrost. Oh my lord. Okay, gonna go for the pylon, which is in the front of the wall. Why is there still no zealot starting? For some reason, there's a second gas and probes being built. Micro... Also, that's wide open. The Lynx could just walk in. Oh my god. Micro Jackson, with some a bad wall off, loses the probe scout. And then just getting absolutely wrecked. Not even building a zealot. Too busy insulting the opponent in chat. Oh, stay salty StarCraft players. I love it. I mean, you know Permafrost is licking those tears up right now. He's getting out his uh, his vial of tears that he bought at the Sewer Mermaid uh, souvenir shop, and he's, he's filling it up right now. He's like, oh, yes, please. The probes are going to try and drill out and surround these uh, Zerglings. They will kill them. Funnily enough, guys, Permafrost was so, I think, worked up by getting called names. Permafrost has not spent the minerals. 900 minerals and is not doing anything. Uh, Permafrost, Hello? No queens, no hatcheries on the way. He's building a queen on the front. Oh, God. This is one of those games where Permafrost should have won the game already, but just hasn't been building units because they were, like, so shocked by the vitriol coming their way. Remember, guys, when your opponent starts calling you names, stay laser-focused. Make sure you finish them off and get those tears, you know? Don't, don't get too caught up just because they're calling you names. They're trying to distract you. Permafrost, though is uh, getting a little distracted here. Micro Jackson's still in a terrible position, especially if that Zealot... Oh, I love that the Zealot's actually creating a wall with the hatchery, but as soon as the Queen comes out, that's going to be bad news bears. The two gateways are on the low ground. There's creep everywhere, which means it cannot be repowered. The Zealot is getting killed by the Queen. The probe's going to try and fight this. Literally neck yourself tonight. Oh, my Lord. Wow. Um... You're a waste of oxygen. I mean, wow, you're a waste of oxygen to planet Earth. This all started because Permafrost pulled a drone, a second drone, and killed the probe that was blocking the hatchery. Goes to the other side of the map, blocks the hatchery, is like, hey, this is all fair and normal. I'm interrupting your build, blocking your expansion, harassing you. You answered that. <laughs> and now I'm really upset, and you're, uh, yeah, you're basically every slur I can think of off the top of my head. Well done. Uh, Micro Jackson. Oh, that's an embarrassing one, buddy. I think you're going to see this video, aren't you? Uh, get off the source and uh, maybe take a look in the mirror, mate. Let's go on to the next one. Oh, my Lord. And, and guess what, guys? Permafrost has also included in the email, apparently. I've got a little package here uh, of images to look at. <laughs> apparently, this is the conversation after the game. So Micro Jackson immediately whispered and said, I'd be proxy hatching people too if I was this bad after 7,267 games. So Micro Jackson is basically in that sentence admitting that they've immediately gone to their opponent's profile to look for little like facts about their StarCraft career so that they can insult them over the fact that they're not as good as they should be after, you know, however much they've played the game. Fofro <laughs> says, lol, you so mad. You're just upset you couldn't mass voids. Okay, so maybe there was a bit of history where they'd mass voids and beat them in an earlier game or something like that. Seven years of play, you can't even bre bre breach break? I think it's meant to be breach. That's weird. You can't even breach Master 3. You pathetic R word. 
<laughs> that's always the greatest man it's like it's like you go to the gym and there's someone who's just like oh yeah you don't even you're not even like super ripped or something and it's like what if they're just just there like mucking around with it just doing a bit of exercise what if they're just playing a few games for fun like you don't need to be a certain level you know but like michael jackson's like, i gotta overlay my expectations for good play on you and, and make you feel bad about it i don't think it's working though because permafrost is just like lol <laughs> yeah i also have a life so i don't really you know i don't care too much michael jackson whispers i'm master with all three races moron i feel like the one way michael jackson at this point you're going for a superiority complex. I got to give some constructive feedback. I think if Mike Jackson mixed the words up here, we've already gone for N word, R word, F word, right? Homophobic, racist, all that. It's, it's really standard. If you really want to say, I'm better than you, I'm an elite StarCraft player, you're a peasant who can't improve at the game. You got to bring out some more creative word usage. So I think here would be a perfect spot. Instead of I master three, uh, I master with all three races moron, it should be I master with all three races worm i think like mix in some some real like you know looking down your nose sneering sort of language try to channel your inner sort of severus snape think of something he'd say to harry in in, in potions class you know you've really got to just seem a bit more arrogant here you can't keep using peasant language while talking down on other people for being peasants and don't get upset by a game yeah well you suck at starcraft okay so micro jackson keeps here working that angle permafrost is like well hey you, you still can't stop a proxy hatch bro <laughs> micro jackson is like get over it and Perfor says, troll -la -la -la, this is the best all ever. I'm gonna submit this for pig to cast. Micro Jackson says, try hard like you're the reason S try hards like you are the reason SC2 is dying. You can't macro to save your life. <laughs> I love the guy with the pylon in front of his wall. This is like the guy who like sets up his artillery in front of his infantry and just gets them all destroyed, and then is like, Well, you attacked me because you just can't even do a war of attrition it's like dude you put your ex logistics and your artillery in front you, you, you played like crap but whatever excuses will be excuses permafrost has a laugh micro jackson throws the get effed and uh and uh before of course any more comments can come back does block communication as every salty person does they say i can have the last laugh and they slap down the ignore opponent button very nicely done, Micro Jackson. Um, yeah, kind of embarrassing for you. Thanks for sharing that one, Permafrost. All right, let's go into the next game. Uh, we've got a bunch of quick games today, guys. So we're throwing a whole bunch. We've got a whole smorgasbord of, of, of very quick games. Sergeant Snuffy in the bottom right, chrono boosting while not actually building probes. That's a, a pro gamer move, that is. And gonna be going for... <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why are there two parts? Do you guys struggle with your wall offs? Do you struggle putting your pylon in the optimal placement? Well, why not just build two? <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> this probe as well looking incredibly suspicious. Uh, we've got Vesper in the top left. So it's V-S-P-E-R versus Sergeant Snuffy. And this is some absolutely primo low level play. This gateway for some reason is over in a corner. That's usually you build it to kind of partially wall off the ramp, but it's just, <laughs> it's just here. Um... Okay, gonna be going double gas as Vesper, doesn't want to get gassed all and it's, it's following the enemy probe. Now, meanwhile, Snuffy is going double gas before gateway. Oh, okay, for those of you who are like, I follow a build order of spawning tool, or I watched a bronze to GM and copied the build, you are about to witness truly good StarCraft play. Like what Snuffy's doing here, if you want to do stuff that makes zero sense, this is where to start. Copy this, but double gas. Double pylon, double gas into... The only thing that's missing is double nexus. Instead, it's third gas before gateway. Oh my god. Fourth gas before gateway and a nexus. This is the greatest, worst build of all time. Notice Snuffy's not even saturating the gases. What's the point? This is, this is like, this has got to be bronze level play, right? The opponent's going for a nexus. Cyber, okay, so Vesper is doing more something, more like a standard opening. They're a little low on their probes, right? They're, they're a little slow on it, but overall it's more like a standard one gate expand. The thing is, they've seen a Nexus, two pylons, two gases, no gateways. If there was ever a time to like rally two zealots across the game and win, the entire map now would be it. Snuffy has over 10 supply free and is building two more pylons before gateway. This can't be seri a serious attempt at StarCraft. How are these players above 12 APM? 
This is the worst build I have ever seen. Like, I don't... I, I've watched a lot of bronze players that go, like, engineering bay first, and they, like, start a plus one upgrade before doing anything else. But this is worse than that. We're going to build three gateways at once at 2 minutes 40? Oh, my lord. My brain hurts. Oh, my lord. Oh, still only at 22 probes as well. <laughs> the fourth gateway. <laughs> Oh, this is rough. All right, a gateway and a robo coming down. So it's going to be two gates and a robo for Vesper. Um, Vesper? I think we should just call him Vesper. That's going to be... It's going to roll off the tongue a little bit better than Vuspur. Vuspur. Like, I, sometimes I try to pronounce names in a way which is, it baffles even me. Extra gateways and pylons going down. So uh, Vesper's not really probing too much. That is going to allow Snuffy to take the economic lead. Unfortunately for Snuffy, there is the small problem of having literally no tech and have taken gases which you don't even have the workers to saturate. I mean, this is... Okay, there we go. That's that's the GG, guys. Two Adepts are going to come across. They will, unless they shade into the middle of the mineral line and get instantly surrounded, these will 100% win the game because there is not a single fighting unit out for Snuffy. Um, now, this is clearly not a high-level game, so uh, there is a good chance Vespa throws these Adepts away, right? So Vespa pulls them back, and now, okay, there we go. We're moving in with the Adepts. There we, okay, yep. Let's see. Oh, the, the probes are going to try and fight him. No, no focus fire. We're just, okay. All right, no stutter step. All right, they are just going to go in and get surrounded. They are going to get surrounded. I called it. They still kill like 10 probes. Yeah, literally 10 probes. So that's still devastating damage. Uh, Stalkers are building right now. Meanwhile, it's just Adepts and a Warp Prism. Okay, what a game we have, guys. This is, wow. I can't believe people play like this on the ladder. This is amazing, man. <laughs> I really, if you guys have a friend who wants to who wants to play Star, and they're like, oh, won't it only be pros playing? I don't know if I'll be able to have close games on the ladder because I don't know how to play. Watch this game. Watch this video and tell me, tell me you, you can't figure out how to do okay in those in those metal leagues. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Stalkers are more than a match for the Adepts. Vesper kind of just looking at it for now. The Observer's going in. Taking two gases as well. What's Vesper? Are we going to go Glaives? Are we going to go Glaives? What are we doing? Okay, the Adepts are going to shade in. The Stalkers are going after it. Snuffy um, going nothing but Stalkers right now. Oh. Oh, there's a Prism here as well. Okay. Oh, oh it's going to be Charge. Okay, it's going to be Charge. Okay, so Vesper's going to go for the Gateway Explosion. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Not too bad. Three gateways, adding six more. It's going to be nine gates. Oh, I'm very impressed, guys. Meanwhile, Snuffy is going to start a Dark Shrine at five minutes and 20 seconds. Not, not the crispest Dark Shrine, but I do like the building placement, though. Notice that this is actually a solid wall of structures. So if there's a unit here, you can't get here. So if Vispa floats in and drops there, Snuffy has to move all the way through the mineral line to get over there. There's no free access around the top of those buildings, which is, of course, very awkward. Now, I think the, uh, where's the Observer at? Okay, it's just hanging out in the main. Sees the DT Shrine coming as well. So, should probably build another Observer or two for sure. Um, Vesper, no Templar Archives, is building an Immortal. Cancels the Gateway, realizing that was walling in the, uh, the Robo. So, very good foresight on that one. And a second Robo! Alrighty then, okay. Wow. I mean, this is, yeah, this is really, wow. Um, <laughs> I feel like, um, you know, it's 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 like going from bloody commentating, uh, bloody MMA title fight to watching two toddlers slap each other in the playground, you know? Like, it's just that the difference makes this so comical for me as someone who gets to cast world championship matches <laughs> and then this. Zealots warp right into the main in isolation. Wow. Um, okay. Oh. Are we going to make DTs to defend? The Stalkers... Okay, Snuffy's trying to stutter step Stalkers. Still only has four gateways. No. Okay, DTs are warping in. But wait, there's an Observer here. They're getting killed by Zealots as they warp in. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. And they all warped in on a slow pylon. They could have warped in over here and they would have been fine, but they all warped in on a slow pylon. These pylons are too far away from the Nexus. F you, you piece of ass. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god, I don't even know what's going to be censored there and what won't. F your mom, F your dad, and the Dolly Lama. 
I think there was something in there about eating um, uh, where the, the, the stuff that helps make babies as well. Um, and there was a thunder? A thunder sea bomb? My god, how, how do I even how do I even talk about these? Hold on a sec, we gotta, we gotta watch that one more time. Alright, here we go. Here we go! As the DTs all get killed, that's when it enters the chat. <laughs> you piece of shit. Guzzling thunder. Oh my lord. Wow. I don't even. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like, all right. I, I don't want the, the video to get banned. You guys, yep. <laughs> We're going to censor some of that out, but dude, that's that was so quick as well. And the Dolly Lama. Dude, that's going up there with you, Joe Biden voter. Talk about out of left field. The Dolly Lama. Go F the Dolly Lama, you bastard. How dare you attack me with zealots at seven and a half minutes, literally by flying into my main and warping them in on top of my face. <laughs> well played, Vespa. All right, guys, let's get into it. I think this will be, probably be the final replay for today's video. We've got Angry Marino in the bottom right saying, uh, oh, it was actually Waddle, sorry, in the top left. The, the blue protoss says, good luck, have fun. Angry Marino says, you too, you too, mate. All right, so a bit of gentleman's agreement at the start of the game. Much higher APM for Angry Marino. I don't know what Marino, but maybe just Angry Marine. It's like, hey, you know, obviously playing Terran, you like the men with guns, you get angry. You spare me the keyboard at literally four times the speed of your Protoss opponent. Let's see if your build's actually any tighter though, because I've cast a lot of games where the Terran or the Zerg is, is spamming away double, triple the APM, but the Protoss's opening is actually way tighter. So far, Protoss opening's good, just missing the Chrono Boost on the probes. The Terran, on the other hand, looks like he's going to go Command Center first. Oh, that's very greedy in this matchup. That, that's not something you see very often. We've started seeing it more in Terran versus Zerg. I've been trying it versus Protoss and Terran for some of my challenges. Um, but it's it's always something where you're kind of crossing your fingers you get by that early game. Yeah, Chrono Boost, second gas goes down as well. So Waddle was planning a bit of a one base centric opening here, but he's going to come in and see the Command Center first. And it's, I mean, I would be prompted to just all in. The barracks does go down at a minute 15, so it's about 30 seconds behind a normal barracks. Now, usually to be safe after this, most players will play two or three barracks before getting gas geysers. Some players will just tech straight up to double gas and factory though. That's a much greedier uh, opening, but of course it gets you into a more normal game if you get past the first three or four minutes. So we'll see which one. Marino's going for a second depot very early. That's not really necessary because your barracks isn't up yet. So you wouldn't get supply block for another minute in this game anyway. Um, behind this looks like a pretty chill opening for Waddle, just mostly saturating the minerals, putting, okay, one guy off minerals onto gas, two off now. Okay, fully saturating. That pulls the scouting probe home and has sent a different probe out. Oh, okay. I think it's because the FCV was chasing the probe. So Waddle wants to proxy and is going to come down here and build a pylon just above the main. Oh, that's going to be not the earliest, but I guess this is a, a bit of a response. Oh, supply blocked. Waddle didn't build a second pylon yet either. Uh-oh. So a bit of a mistake here for Waddle, but Waddle is clearly cheesing after seeing the command center first. A pylon at the front as well. Maybe going to build some batteries or, or some gateways down there. Marino has gone, oh, it's the, the greedy double gas that I told you all about. It's it's the double gas. Dude, so he's just going to build Marines out of a single barracks and put them in a bunker? Oh, I mean, this is just a, yeah, proxy stargate. So Waddle's just countering the build. Now, if it was a three racks, you could defend the void rays, right? But there's a gateway and even a battery. And it's going up in vision. Oh, Marino could literally just pull the Marines and SCVs, A move, clear this out. That would be a huge start for Marino. But Marino desperately needs to get up more production. And the factory starting at 2 minutes 50 is very late. Okay, the Marines here are going to start taking the stuff down. Um, not a single unit's out. The first Adept only now popping here for the Protoss player who's trying to get up those three gateways. Luckily put another pylon down. But a big mistake for Marino. Targeting the pylon instead of the battery. The battery is much weaker. And now the battery can use its healing to heal the pylon. Of course, Waddle would need to micro that. Batteries only automatically heal combat uh, buildings. So cannons and... Obviously, units, they'll heal as well. Okay, there we go. The, the battery does do a little bit of healing on that pylon. Another bunker coming forward. More Marines are building, but that first Void Ray is on the way, and that's going to cause trouble. Oh, the Adept's in here. Watch out, Marino. Get out of here. Get back to the bunker, bro. Oh, Marino's trying to stand and fight. The Adept is going to take out one Marine. Will it get two? No, only one Marine, but heavily damages another one. Every bit of damage matters because that factory is still not being used. There's no extra barracks up or anything like that. Marino is so distracted by the attack at the front that this Void Ray is going to hit like a brick shit house. This is going to drive in the main and do massive damage. Oh, those Marines, non-stim Marines, they're so far away. Luckily, depowers the gate. 
so there's no warpins at the front but warpins could still happen up here the void ray arrives in the mineral line a couple of barracks try to go down but that's not the most important thing needs to be starting cyclones and getting these marines back here marino has two mineral lines so if marino drops mules which right now there is like energy for three or four mules saved up could get a lot of money but should absolutely keep mining running the SEVs away does not help you get things that shoot up Four Marines going after the Void Ray. That Void Ray's got to watch out. It kills the Red Point Marine, but now it's got to pull back. Second Void Ray's about to pop out. Those Marines need to pull back. These SCVs need to go back to mining, though. Angry Marino is completely frozen up. By the way, wait, there's a third Command Center building? Hello? You're getting rushed and you decide to build a third Command Center? So Marino thought the Proxy Gate was the entire rush. Thought this was cleaned up. Starts the third command center and then the void ray flies in. Oh, a massive misread for Marino. But Marino does get a lock on the void ray, gets very good damage on that, but isn't really using the units correctly. I mean, this is actually held though, as long as he doesn't just throw the cyclone away. Oh my god. Oh my god, what's he doing? Not locking on there for a long time. And then he runs away from the void ray, does let it escape. But yeah, Marino actually has easily held this game. Still not dropping mules. Has three mules saved up there, two mules there. That's thousands of resources going to waste. Stalkers at the front, not to mention the gateway is getting repowered. And soon there's going to be three void rays. These two heavily damaged, but a third one will be popping out. Right now there's only two cyclones. And a big mistake for Marino, leaving it on the edge, means those void rays will come in. And you'll have no time to react before they lock on. So pulling them towards the middle much safer for Marino because you want to run forward, lock on, and then run back before those Void Rays kill your units. Bunkers up. Marino is building more bunkers right now, but is supply blocked. Um, has dropped a lot of mules, which means you can see thousands of resources coming in, but is supply blocked right now. Pulling SCVs to repair a little bit late. Oh, the repair gets in just in time. Nice repair for Marino. Takes out a Stalker or two, does a lot of damage to them. And the third Cyclone's out. I think Marino's got this, dude. If Marino can just actually settle down and spend the money, they've been supply blocked for about a minute. Uh, meanwhile, Waddle is expanding behind this. Here we go, Cyclone's. Oh no, run, that's what I'm talking about. Don't run underneath, what are you doing? Just A move and they'll automatically lock on. This is some of the worst Cyclone micro I've seen. F toss, man, you effing race is shit. Oh, angry Marino has had every opportunity to defend this push and has just not been able to focus on the right things. Greedy opening says Waddle, and this was a somewhat reactive all in. Why do you typo effing? Good luck, have fun, and then do so dirty cheese, you effing a-hole. Man, play some macro, you noob. Effing toss, chewies, ch ch cheese, chewies, cheese, v cheese, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you salty mate can you do something on baelis okay so something else is what that's meant to be akutali actually i'm gonna i'm here to translate for you internet ha huh, is it in your mind you fucking ac acne cancer ac acne cara a care what i think i think it's just meant to be cancer and he type tried to type it twice you cancer cancer one poor but natural, huh? Oh, 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 he scanned and saw only one probe at the natural. That's one poor but the natural. You're not good at macro. You've only got one porb. Is Q is button for probbler. <laughs> Q is button for probbler. That's the greatest thing I've ever heard. That's, that's true advice. If you guys are playing with the standard hotkeys, Q is the default. But actually, it's not. That's only if you're using grid. Who the hell uses grid? What are you, a League of Legends player, you noob? It's E. E is the standard hotkey for pro. But yes, I know standard hotkeys kind of suck. But uh, Angry Reader says Q is the button for the probe, you effing moron. Waddle's just like, I love salty dishes, bro. Keep serving it up, dude. I will eat it all. You know, I went for a good run today. I'm a bit depleted on the minerals. Need to refill that sodium. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rage from Marino. I love it as well because it's always rage when you're fumbling over your own feet. So guys, remember, if you've spent two to three minutes supply blocked, focusing on building a third command center rather than, oh, I don't know. <laughs> there could have been multiple cyclones out. There could have been three barracks pumping stim marines out for minutes. Think about it. These mules only dropped at five minutes. And even then, if there was just depots and marines pumping nonstop, like if Marino was able to turn the minerals into actual units, this is game over so easily. But Marino is too busy getting salty. And I mean... The, the building the third command center over there had to be the funniest thing. Like that that decision, like I want to see when that command center went down. So check out this decision making, guys. We're looking at this from Angry Marino's vision. So Angry Marino is like, sweet, we got it. I didn't bother scouting at all this game, but luckily my opponent proxied in vision of my bunker. Terrible proxy from model. Like I said, every opportunity possible. 
And then he's like, cool, I've defended it. Throws down the third command oh, center. And then scrolls over to the main and sees this and is like, oh, what? Are you kidding me? Oh, there's a void raid in my main base. Oh, and he's so angry. And then... <laughs> Even from here, dude, there's so many opportunities to defend. I mean, don't get me wrong, Void Rays can be very annoying, but if you're opening Command Center first into a four minute third Command Center with no scouting, can you really get angry at someone for scouting you being greedy and then killing you? Or is that maybe just StarCraft? You guys let me know in the comment section what you think. We had a lot of crazy people today coming out with all sorts of different things. But I do have to think Angry Marino, as much as I'm making fun of them, is my favorite out of all the players in today's VODs because they gave some constructive advice at the end. They said, look, buddy, I know you're cheesing because you don't know how to macro. I am going to remove one cheeser from the ladder and I'm going to give you that advice. Q is the button for probers. You build those probers, those probies, you get more than one in your natural. You don't have to void rate all in. So I hope you heard that advice, Waddle. And thank you, Angry Marino, for being the legend who coaches the players that I I'm too high and mighty to bother coaching. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next episode of The Salt Mines. Don't forget to send me your outlandish replays. Links down below so you guys, if people send you just crazy insults and all sorts of weird things, uh, send those through to the email below. And we'll see you in the next episode, everybody. If you want to see other salty people, click on one of the videos on the screen, and we will catch you in the next video. Goodbye and good night.